Hello and welcome to the Pixel Street Podcast episode. Is this seventy seven? Shit, I, I, I don't. don't know. I, I don't think I updated the Google Doc. Uh, one second, why? Uh, we're, we're doing it live. It's failing. It's failing. We're doing it live. All right, this apart. is episode seventy seven of the Pixel Street Podcast. My name is Joel Campos, and as always, I'm joined by the man who has already requested off February twenty first, twenty twenty, John Hansen. I actually might get around to doing that. I'm pretty excited for that day. Yeah, I think that that's going to be the move. Especially it's a Friday, so it makes it even sweeter because then you can just play mm-hmm. it three days straight. Uh, but nonetheless, we are also joined with Connor Cop. Um, have you contemplated taking the day off? Or I mean, you make your own schedule, right? Yeah, I run my own schedule. So <clears throat> chances are I'm going to take the day after off. Uh, is the 22nd is actually my birthday, so oh. uh, I'm sure I'll have some kind of excuse in the works to play some Last of Us. Yeah, I have a feeling that's going to be a weekend filled of like pizza and some Diet Coke uh, as my drink of choice. And uh, I'm so unbelievably excited for that video and game. And late nights. Oh, I know, I know. It's all I can think about right now. Um, but we'll we'll yeah. get into that in a little bit. Um, you can find the Pixel Street Podcast on most podcast platforms on Fridays, including spotify um Woo! we're on spotify now we're just gonna keep saying it because a lot of people use it um as well as on uh youtube by searching for almost random there um yeah and you can also watch the show directly on our facebook group by searching sh- by searching for pixel street podcast um if you use facebook uh, which i recommend because john posts a lot of his articles that he writes uh in our facebook group uh, so yeah, go check those out. Uh, we enjoy having new people follow our content, and we hope to keep you around. With that in mind, we have decided to run another giveaway once we reach 100 followers on our Twitter page by searching at Pixel Street Pod. Um, yeah, the last game, what did we give away last time? Was it Cuphead? It was Cuphead. Yeah, and we just enjoyed doing that because we got a lot of engagement, and it was just fun. Fun mm-hmm. times, fun times. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about our Borderlands 3 impressions the Sony State of Play event that happened this week, and we're going to try and figure out where the hell Batman is um, from WB. You know? They've been teasing a lot of stuff. He's been gone for a long time. I miss him. Oh, no, no, he hasn't. He's in Fortnite. Isn't that uh, that what you all wanted? I'm gone. Bye, guys. Sorry. (laughs) I think I remember you specifically asking for Batman in Fortnite. No, I've never asked for anything in Fortnite. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing with you. But nonetheless, let's get into the new releases coming out in the next week here. Um, I don't think there's much. Mario Kart Tour came out today uh, as of September 25th, the day we are recording. Mario Kart Tour is on your app store on your phone. Yeah, is, is it everywhere? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I've got this downloaded. I'm planning on doing a gameplay video tonight on my personal youtube that's revic shadows um but uh i i don't know i haven't really looked into it too much i i've only seen like the early gameplay that like leaked forever ago which doesn't have me too excited one of the sites i write for is like putting up tons and tons of guides for it though so check out gameper.com and you can really learn up on mario kart tour if you are feeling it yeah, if you're feeling like paying money for stuff, <laughs> yeah, is kind of the gist I'm getting from that. Uh, also, microtransactions, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're slave to them. Uh, also coming out is a bunch of Dragon Quest. Uh, I want to say ports to the Switch one, two, and three, coming Thursday, September twenty sixth. Um, let's see. Anything else you guys are excited for? Code Vein comes out this Friday. What I'm, is that? Uh, so, I don't really know much about it, honestly. But at my it's a Soulsborne, is it okay? That kind of killed my hype then. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I've been hearing people at my store excited about it, and all I've heard is vampires, and I'm like, oh, okay. And like you, I just hear like little tidbits and everything, but I haven't actually looked into the gameplay or anything. But not much of a Soulsborne guy, so that kind of kills my hype there. But. Yeah, I mean, it's got some interesting mechanics aside from it. Like like you said, you are a vampire, uh, and you need blood, but you can also use that blood to kind of infuse some power into your attacks and get some extra damage going off. 
Uh, but also on top of it, one of the things that kind of changes it up from some of the other Soulsborne stuff for me is that you have a companion with you. And if you have that companion, they can revive you if you get downed. So there is a little bit of a grace mechanic there, even though it is kind of that, you know, dodgy timing based combat that uh, Soulsborne stuff is known for. Uh, but I, I think it's uh, it's pretty interesting. I think even if you're not into the Soulsborne stuff, this probably has the best chance of uh, being something in that genre that you like. So maybe worth a go. That's cool. Uh, also coming out Friday is Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition for the Nintendo Switch. So if you've been playing Smash and wonder who the hell the hero is there, you get to play that. <laughs> Uh, been only hearing really good things about this so far, so I might check it out from my work and I give mean, it there, a try. There's a demo, isn't there a demo for it? Oh yeah, there is, and it's actually a pretty big demo if I remember. Yeah, right. like I heard it that, takes quite a few hours to yeah, beat. Yeah, you, you can sink like five hours or something into that demo, and progress yeah. carries over. Yeah, I'll definitely have to download that and give it a try. Um, never tried Dragon Quest before, but uh, yeah, definitely something to give a try. Uh, Ori in the Blind Forest also comes to the Switch. There's a lot of Switch games this week, like not just like the usual like <laughs> indie games. Oh, but oh you, you mean like, you mean not Chop His Dish? It, yeah, not uh, Button <laughs> Button Up, not Fighting Rage, uh, but yeah, Dark Siders Two Definitive Death Initiative Edition. Uh, yeah, Ori, man, there, there's some there's some big uh, decently good ones on here. Uh, I know Connor is going to be excited for Shadow Keep coming out this Yo, next week. Yo, let's go! I think I'm pre-ordering it tonight. I, you know, I've been in the same boat too. It, like, just I know I'm going to buy it. I, I know I'm going to do it. I just I can't say no to Destiny at this point. It's like a crippling addiction that I just can't get away from. So I'm I'm probably going to end up buying it tonight. But yes, I mildly excited. Con- Connor, Connor, have, have you still been playing lately? Uh, on and off. Okay, because like my question is, y- you think at this point I'm better because I have not played in a long time. You think I'm better off mm-hmm. just waiting until the new DLC drops and then getting back into it? Because then I'll be getting I mean, all the higher light level gear. Right. The I mean the nice thing is that uh, when Shadow Keep drops, there will be a level boost in it that'll boost you up to 750. Uh, I'm assuming it's a power surge quest, so it'll probably be like a small quest chain that just boosts you up, uh, and then you're at level to start the Shadow Keep stuff if you're not there already. Um, that being said, though, I mean, you could grind out some bounties and stuff and, and start stocking materials and things up for Shadowkeep. I know that's what a lot of the hardcore players are doing, but at this point, most of the content content that's there, if you're looking for story stuff, is just kind of lackluster. So probably best waiting for uh, Shadowkeep if that's what you're excited for. Yeah, I, th- what, I think that's Destiny the story way. being lackluster? Whoa, what? Whoa, whoa. Come on. All right. Come on. All right. <laughs> hey, All hey right. we outnumber you, John, two to one. This is a <laughs> Destiny podcast. Ooh. Now. How's that Overwatch story campaign? <laughs> oh, but speaking of Overwatch story campaign, you can also buy the Overwatch official cookbook. Yeah, I was Tuesday, just going to say, I love, I love how that is in uh, video game releases. Like, what the hell is this? It's, it's, it's a just a cookbook. Overwatch stuff. Yeah. I mean, that but was pretty self explanatory. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't make any sense here. Okay, they have a thing called. I'm, I clicked on it. It's thirty one dollars and fifty cents on Amazon. There is a recipe called the seventy six. This is one of the pages you can see, um, <clears throat> and yeah, it pretty much just looks like some sort of milkshake type deal. Uh, ingredients are heavy cream, uh, white chocolate chips, red, white, and blue sprinkles, red food coloring, blue food coloring, two cups of whole milk. Vanilla ice cream and vanilla extract. So, yeah, it's essentially just ice cream. That's a very Soldier 76 dish. There's an Orissa Sunday. What else we got? Valkyrie's Flight. Oh, my God. That looks delicious. <laughs> Joel's going to end up buying this before we finish the podcast. Canadian Butter Tarts. What? <laughs> what? Why is it Canadian? I don't understand. Which one of them's Canadian, I, John? I don't know. Well, and then the, o- the only one that has ties to Canada is Farah, because her dad is Canadian. Okay, I was, that was the right answer. See, I didn't know that, but right next to it, it says Africa, Farah. So that's why it, it threw me way off there. Okay, but um, yeah, nonetheless, go buy that cookbook if you're really trying to eat some Overwatch-inspired meals. Yeah, I mean they. 
I this isn't the first time Blizzard's done something like this. Like, didn't they release a WoW one and then? I mean, I feel like in WoW it makes more sense because you actually eat in the game. <laughs> yeah, but the they are actually like building up a world in Overwatch, so no, nah. you could do this for pretty much any game. In all honesty, but whatever. Uh, moving on, last really big uh, uh, release in the next week here is uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Either of you guys gonna play this? Uh, I I like the the last one a lot, but I I don't know. I like there was there have been betas going on. Like there was one a few weeks ago, and then there's one this weekend, I believe. Um, and I just haven't seen enough about it. Like I didn't even know that they were going on while they were happening. So, I don't know. I think I yeah. might wait for a sale on this. I had a very hard time getting into Wildlands as it just didn't click for me. Uh, the control scheme was just odd, and I wasn't into it, uh, and it was very off-putting. So, uh, this one, I think I'm probably going to be up to a, a similar experience. But I will say that the injury system has me more interested in this one than I was for Wildlands. So, I don't know. I, I think I agree. I'll, I'll probably pick it up on a sale or something, but uh, definitely not a full price. Yeah, this is something I'm going to wait on, too. I played a lot of Wildlands, and I beat the story, but I can't say that during all of my time playing it that I actually loved the game. Like, it, it was it was a good game, but there were a lot of issues with it in my eyes, uh, just from performance and also just uh, how, kind of like what Connor said, the handling of the game, the controls, uh, just how you interact with everything in the game. Uh, it just wasn't, it, it wasn't up to code for an Ubisoft game, really, because when you think of like a big open world game from Ubisoft, like Assassin's Creed, they it feels good going around in the world, and uh, Wildlands was just kind of clunky, I felt. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's it on uh, game releases. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about all those small indie Switch games, but that would be a whole podcast in itself. So, um, yeah, let's, let's move on. on. Um, John, you want to take the free games with gold? Yeah, right now on Xbox One, you can get Hitman, the complete first season uh, if you love stealth games, definitely give this a try. It's a lot of fun. I'm not much of a stealth guy, and I still really enjoyed it. Uh, very fun sandbox game where you can like kill your targets in many, many different ways. Lots of fun. Uh, then also, oh, that is until September 30th, so only a few more days on that. Uh, until October 15th, we have We Were Here. I've downloaded it, but I haven't given it a try yet. It's only a $5 game, so probably nothing too big there. Uh, and then on the 360 side of things, until the 30th, you can get Tekken Tag Tournament 2, which, I mean, is just Tekken, right? Like, I, what's the tag tournament? Is it just, like, fighting with two people? Essentially, yeah, it's it's you pick a couple characters and then you can bounce back and forth between them. Okay, so kind of like a Marvel versus Capcom thing, but with only yeah. two people. Yep. All right, cool. Um, on Xbox Game Pass, I don't think there's been anything new announced, which was kind of weird. Well, well, they announced yesterday. Yes, there has. <laughs> um, yeah, so they didn't give dates on them, but they said that coming to Xbox One for Game Pass, you will have. Uh, Jump Force, uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, and Lego Worlds. And then on PC, you're going to be able to download Cities, Skylines, Saints Row 4, Bad North, and Dirt Rally 2.0. Um, okay. and, then there, and then there's more indie games coming uh, in the next month, like Genesis Noir, Lonely Mountains Downhill, Demon's Tilt. Um, so yeah. And there's more to be shown at ID at Xbox Game Pass on September 26th. So by the time this podcast comes out, you should know about more stuff coming, I guess. Cool. Uh, on PlayStation, until the end of September, you can play Batman Arkham Knight and Darksiders 3. Haven't played Darksiders 3. Arkham Knight is a good game. Uh, definitely my least favorite of the Arkham games, but very good regardless. Um... Oh, and they also announced their October games during their state of play yesterday. MLB 19 The Show and The Last of Us Remastered will be free in October. So some pretty big games coming out then. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, these past two months, PlayStation has been killing it with those free games. Like, those are all great games. Yeah, for sure. 
uh, over on Twitch Prime until the end of September. You have Wonder Boy, The Dragon Strap, Pump BMX Pro, Mabel in the Wood, and Automa Chef. Yeah. Uh, Twitch Prime, right. I feel like, is the weakest out of all of them in terms of free games. Um, it seems more like they're going for the quantity over quality. <laughs> I mean, that's always kind of it. They've always been like smaller indie games, really. Yeah. All right, um, with that, let's get into what we're playing. And by the looks of it, it's going to be a lot of talk about one game. John, e- Connor, what is that game? Borderlands Bazillion. Yeah, I, I, There's I, I, so I, bazillion guns. guns this point, Borderlands honestly. Bazillion's uh, guns. Yeah, Borderlands 3. I'm playing Borderlands 3. Same, so same. How far are you guys into the game? I just hit level 21. I know John is much further than me. Yeah, I've I've beaten it and I'm level fifty. Oh fuck me! I'm like level twenty four. I think I hit last night or twenty five. So it sounds like me and Connor are around the same area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm loving the game. <laughs> I can't stop playing it. And I know that I'm. I know that I know ahead. that a lot of people are like, I keep seeing posts like, oh, it's all shit and dick jokes. But quite honestly, I think most of the jokes are pretty funny. Um, and I didn't expect that going in because I'd never played through Borderlands 2. I played Borderlands 1 a few months ago, but th- that game's kind of outdated, um, in my opinion, in terms of the loot system and everything. And I think Borderlands 2 is similar, where you have to loot everything by hitting X. But in this game, they updated that by pretty much auto-looting. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, this game... Uh, so I've never been like huge in the Borderlands in the past. I played the first one, never beat it. Uh, earlier this year, I played two with uh, some of mine and Connor's friends, and uh, but they're super hardcore in the Borderlands. Like I, <laughs> they like ran through the campaign like five times in one week. Uh, and, and they're really the guys that helped me get out the level fifty so fast. Like I, I went through the campaign really fast, and I just got to a point where I was like, okay. Josh, just carry me through this. I'm, I, I don't really care about the story. I just want to get through this and get me up to a level where I can do stuff with you guys. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, but I have to say this is my favorite of the Borderlands series so far. Uh, they have added in some nice little touches. Like you said, the auto-looting and everything. Uh, the guns, I think, are really well made and everything. Um, me and Connor were talking the other night though about some issues we do have with it. Um, I was saying that the story writing is lazy. It's not, and you're not coming to a Borderlands game for the story in the first place. Let's just be real here. But it's just people complain about like the writing and everything, and I I don't really agree that it's bad writing because it does uh fit a certain crowd. But I don't think it's... It has some funny parts, but generally, for as much as it's going for, it fails in a lot of areas when it's trying to be funny. It, it kind of feels like it's trying to be something like a South Park, where it's just trying to be like um, very lewd and everything. And it, it just doesn't hit it for me at certain points. Yeah, I've been playing this game pretty casually uh, since it dropped. And like you said, we played a little bit the other day together. And honestly, that's probably the most fun I've had with it <clears throat> is uh, playing with other people, which, you know, that's that's kind of the other Borderlands games. Um, that being said, though, uh, Borderlands was always something that didn't really click for me. I always tried to force it and, and gave the other ones a try uh, and just really tried to, you know enjoy them for what they were and it just never did it for me i think i played through like half of borderlands 2 and just fell off uh, as i was terribly uninterested uh that being said uh i am enjoying borderlands 3 much more i think that the combat and the movement system uh is absolutely fantastic in this game it feels very very good and smooth uh which is great but i'm still very lukewarm on this game like it's, it's not that the game is horribly bad, and like you said, the, the story writing, I don't think it's as bad as some people make it out to be, but it just feels very uninterested in itself at times. Like, I, I 
play through it and it almost is just not even attempting to make me care about anything. It's like, yeah, we know you're probably not going to pay attention to half of this anyway, so we don't really care if you do or don't. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I kind of agree with what both of you are saying in terms of like the story is just like you're not there for the story. It's basically like, here, go here, you know, maybe see this cool looking boss or this cool boss mechanic. Um, You don't really care about, I guess, necessarily what's happening. Uh, one one mm-hmm. thing they changed that I do like is the fast travel system. Is that you can pretty much fast travel anywhere at any time. Um, not not kind anywhere. Of. You know, like to the fast travel points. So like, if I'm in the middle of the map, I can go to the map and fast travel back to yeah. sanctuary, which is pretty much home base, or any other planet, which I think is really nice. Yeah, this this was one issue that I brought up with Connor the other night is I I do like that you can fast travel anywhere now because before you had to go to the fast travel points to fast travel. Now you can be out in the middle of a field and do it and you can fast travel to any fast travel point or your car if it's just sitting out in the middle of somewhere. I wish, though, that they would have made it just all the checkpoints you could fast travel to because there's just a lot of needless running around. Yeah. At yeah. some points. And also, I wish you could just fast travel to the people you are playing with. Like, it, it would just be nice to do that. Obviously, not a deal breaker by any means, but it, it is annoying. Um, I know me and Connor were also talking a bit about our issues with the map. I really do not like the map layout in this uh, game. Not, not, not like the... I mean, like, the view of the map. Yeah, oh, okay, like, the, like, when you hit the back button. Yes, go going yeah, that into that weird it. 3D map yeah. thing that they've got going on just doesn't work. I agree, yeah. it's, it's weird, but I don't know how they could revise it other than saying, like, this is the first floor map, this is the second floor map, you know what I mean? But right. yeah, yeah. I, I agree, it is confusing at times when you're trying to get somewhere and you can't tell, like, well, is it on this floor, or is it above me, and I just can't see a ramp going up because it's not that high? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. When I think other games accomplish this much better with things like a shading system, you know, where different floors are maybe different colors, or maybe when you're on a floor, that floor highlights. Uh, so you can see, you know, at that level, everything else is a similar color on the map, and then everything below or above is kind of grayed out a little bit. Uh, but it's just kind of a mishmash, and it's hard to navigate. Or maybe just give your. Uh the objective like give it a trail that you need to follow to get to it the fastest like in fable yeah. or in grand theft auto like other games have done this before i i get really tired of just following the symbol on my map and then hitting a dead end and realizing i took a wrong turn because the map is just has so many twist and turns with its walls and everything no i agree and to comp- uh, t- uh to continue the complain train uh, my biggest issue with this game, realistically, is the inventory system. Uh, I think it is overwhelmingly frustrating uh, to constantly be having to manage your inventory because the best thing about the game is the guns, obviously. I mean, that's mm-hmm. their main advertising point. It's what they talk about. And you're constantly having to go back to that inventory. And I know that, obviously, you can spend cash to kind of upgrade your inventory, but it only upgrades it by three at a time. Uh, and it's just really not a great answer. It, level 21, I think I'm at like 27 inventory spaces. And, I mean, you kill a boss and you get five, six, seven drops out of that boss. So now it, it's pulling you out of the action where you have to stop, start looking at your inventory and think about, like, what can I drop? What can I get rid of so that I can pick up all this good stuff I got? Because I know it's going to be forever before I get to a shop to be able to sell off all the bad crap or whatever and be able to generate cash, you know? Yeah, I... It's just not a great feeling. It it really pulls you out of the action. Yeah, I I found myself that, like, once I found some good legendary guns, it took a long time for me to find guns that were better. Like, ten levels, Mm -hmm. almost. So, for me, what I did is I just gathered up every gun I could and then just sold them. Unless it was a legendary, then, in my opinion, it wasn't worth me going through my inventory to drop stuff to pick them up. Unless, like, they were noticeably better than what I already had. Right, but I... And maybe it's less of a problem later on in the game, but there's such a big focus with the SDUs, the uh, storage deck upgrades, uh, on buying those to expand your inventory space, and obviously you need cash for that. And the best way to make cash in that game is by selling off guns and stuff. And 
it just makes it very hard to do kind of what you are supposed to do. Uh, and it's just frustrating. Yeah, I know that I kind of cheesed that SDU system kind of a bit because my buddy who has beaten the game, you know, he's, I don't know what Guardian rank or whatever, but he joined my game and then he has some gun that just shoots out guns. And he's like, here, I'm going to mm-hmm. take all the purples and you take everything else and just sell it because you can't use it yet. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, each gun was worth, like, 16 grand. So I literally sold, like, 20 guns and then had so much money to buy stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is great, but I don't think that you should have the default options like that. Oh, I know. Just to kind of do what you need to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> there are tons and tons of ways to cheese this game, though. Uh, there were, like early level weapons that can still be used to like one shot bosses up until like level 50. Um, there's just a, a bunch of like different things you can take advantage of the game with, with the co-op and everything. I've definitely done that because I don't, I don't like grinding. I don't like uh, wasting my time, which I feel like these kind of games do all the time. Uh, but my biggest problem with the game has been the performance so far. Uh, especially playing multiplayer. Uh, you pull up your inventory and it lags everyone behind. And it's uh, like, even in single player, you get this where you like go to pull up your inventory and the game just stutters like no other until it finally gets pulled up. Uh, there's been quite a few issues with it. I would imagine that they're working on uh, an update to fix it and everything, but it it gets really frustrating. Have you guys been playing... Do you guys have Xbox One Xs? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, same. Um, th- did you guys set it to resolution or... Um, what's the other one? Performance. Uh, performance, yeah. Performance. Yeah, yeah. I, do per- I always do performance. Yeah, I always, I always so, do performance unless it's a game like Last of Us or something like I, that. I recently swapped my Xbox back over to my 4K TV as I usually play at my desk uh, with a 2K monitor. And I had it set for resolution and... I actually kind of have a bit of a step up on the Xbox One X. I have an external SSD, and anything I throw on that external SSD, generally, I never have any issues uh, whatsoever with. The load times are generally fantastic. Uh, Online games, I'm usually one of the first people in the lobby, which is great. Uh, But for Borderlands, even with that, uh, it, it barely touched the game. I mean, resolution mode works miserably uh, and then performance mode even, I, I don't know how many issues you guys have had, but today even, I was playing a little bit, I paused, or opened up my map, rather, and spent a few minutes to talk to my fiance when she got home uh, from work, and then I went to go back on the game and just exit out of my map, and the game completely locked up and turned off my Xbox. Oh yeah, uh, and, I, and I haven't, crashed my Xbox. I haven't had it crash my Xbox, but I've had it do that thing where... Uh, like I run into a room or something, and then like you know how the audio is just like, and then mm, it just and it crashes the game. Yeah, motorboats. Yeah, it's done that to me multiple times. Oh yeah, no, I've had that multiple times, but I have had the game like completely crash my Xbox when I just went to go uh, search for an online game, like just a random, <laughs> uh, just look for random people to play with. It crashed my entire Xbox. Like it, it's a bit. Uh, I, I I don't want to talk crap about Gearbox because they've been working on this game for a very long time, and I think they have put a lot of good work into the game. I really think they do, but some of the performance issues is uh, not uh, not great. Let's just say that. Yeah, I mean, in all honesty, though, I think it runs good enough now to where it seems like something they could patch out uh, in the near future. Oh, yeah, like, it, sure. it's It's not something that I think is like, you know being bottlenecked by this generation like Mm -hmm. so yeah definitely um something that they could patch for sure i I know that one thing people have been doing has been like going into the settings and changing the field of view down to like 80 because i think it defaults at 90 and people have said that that helps a lot with those issues but that's not something you should have to do um to get the game to work better especially on a console like the xbox one x i mean that that console is so ridiculously more powerful than any other platform out there at this point and things should run smooth provided they're optimized well and that's the problem is that borderlands 3 is just not properly optimized from what it seems like i 
or maybe it's just bad QA or whatever the situation may be. And I think, you know, John, I, I, I disagree a little bit. I, I do want to kind of slam Gearbox a little bit because this game is, is how long in the making? Borderlands 2 came out when? 2012? Yeah, seven years ago. I mean, sure, this would be a little more acceptable where, it like, you know, two or three years after that game where it was kind of a quick turnaround time. Uh, because realistically, I mean, yes, there's a lot of changes in this game, but most of the changes are not that drastic or wild oh, from no. Borderlands yeah. 2. Yeah. You know, it's it's a very, very similar experience. Granted, it has a better movement system, and I'm not a developer by any means, so, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that goes on, but... I think seven years to have problems like this, and especially to have problems like this after launch, so long after launch, uh, you know, because we're we're coming up on a few weeks here, is just kind of crazy to me. You you don't see it uh, in, in the industry, and uh, it's kind of mind blowing that they haven't done something about it, or that even that it just launched in this state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Uh, yeah, it. <laughs> Like you said, I'm I'm just gonna say I'm not a developer. I don't know how it's handled. I don't know. Right. Like we only see stuff on the outside. I know you and me have our uh, reservations on Randy Pitchford. Don't know what kind of <laughs> role anything there has played into anything. So, uh, agreed. It's uh, I, I don't know. It, I'm just gonna say it's definitely not in the running for game of the year for me. But it is a good game. Yeah. yeah, I think the, the fun that you have in the game definitely lessens the blow of, of some of the issues that surround it from the outside. Uh, but I, I agree. I think that it could have been a much better experience if a lot of this stuff was ironed out. But even that being said, it's not a bad experience. It's just frustrating because you want to enjoy it. You want to play it. And this stuff just gets in the way. It could have been so much better than it actually is. Right, right. Yeah, like it's a great game. I I'm enjoying it a lot. I don't think it'll be game of the year for me either, but um it's just frustrating that games are it's pretty much expected any major game now is going to have problems like this. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's move on the news. I'm tired <laughs> yeah, of talking yeah, this about this. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right, um state of play, guys. That happened this week. Yeah, who watched um, it? Uh, I think we I all did. did. I didn't. Live. I was working. I uh, oh. I watched it while I was driving home from work. I propped my phone up. It mainly listened, but I'm calling the cops. Yeah, I'm, calling I'm already the here. <laughs> Dude, he got your ass, John. He got your ass. You're under arrest. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah. So there's some good. You know, there's Can't a lot of good. Me, Daddy. Oh my god. Welcome to the ASMR um, <laughs> uh, role-playing podcast. So, State uh, of play. Sony's Nintendo Direct, uh, because that's what it was, Nintendo Direct. It looked just like a Nintendo Direct. John, did you watch a recap on it afterwards? No, I only watched the individual trailers. Okay, so Joel, you, you had to have seen it. Yeah. This, the format was literally... A Nintendo Direct, was it not? Oh, yeah, it was. It was literally like they showed you one thing, and then it was like, there it is. And you could see what was coming. Yeah, it was the the, the squares format and, and kind of the slideshow, and it was just well, even, real crazy. Even the Inside Xbox, which we're going to talk about in a bit, had something kind of similar, where they just had a list of things that were coming up. Man, but, uh, I, I miss the Inside Xbox, but that's, uh, that's just funny to me, that Nintendo has clearly knocked it <laughs> out of the park that everybody wants to take over their format so i mean nintendo uh, anyway. is just really they they've just perfected their craft with it like they are still the best at doing these kind of presentations yeah and that's true. It, it definitely doesn't help that sony it doesn't seem like they've really found their footing in what they want the state of place to be because i agree there's, there have only been three agree. so far and they've all been pretty different Hmm. yeah with varying degrees of impact too like a nintendo direct generally you expect it to be relatively large and impactful yeah uh to nintendo's lineup and and they always set expectation too ahead of time if they're going to have a smaller one or if it's just going to focus on a singular game but even when it does it's generally a very big look at whatever they're talking about uh but yeah i agree i think these state of plays just haven't quite figured out what they want to be yet 
Uh, but I will say there was some good stuff going on in this one. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty interested in a couple of these. Um, yeah, do, does somebody want to start going through a recap, start reading some of this? I'll, uh, I'll take the recap, I'll roll through this. So, uh, first off, during this, we had a, uh, uh, a trailer shown for a game called, man, I'm, I'm trying to find the name of it here, uh, Watam. Uh, did you, did you get to check that out, John? Uh, so I've heard it's pretty much a Katamari ripoff. So it's not a Katamari ripoff, but it is by the Katamari Damachi creator, okay. uh, Keita Takahashi, uh, and it's going to be released in December. It's kind of funny, though, because I was playing Katamari Damachi uh, the day before the state of play and thinking, wow, uh, it's crazy that we haven't seen anything like this in the, the recent few years. Uh, and sure enough, here it is. So uh, in this game, it looks like you're kind of connecting people. There's different people with, like, uh, they're all very cutesy Katamari style, uh, you know, odd beings. Uh, there are flower people, there are cube people, and it seems like maybe you have to complete some different objectives and stuff to kind of link these people up or to satisfy them so that uh, there's almost like a, a reuniting theme uh, or a come together to solve a puzzle or, or some kind of uh, underlying theme that they're going for there. So uh, that's an interesting one that we should definitely be on the lookout for. Uh, next up, there was a uh, relatively large trailer for a game called Arise, A Simple Story. Uh, it's an action-adventure game. It's cartoon, and it's coming soon to PS4, so no date or anything on that. Uh, it did look pretty interesting. Definitely uh, uh, go check that out if you're into kind of smaller indie uh, experiences. Um, next up, you've got L.A. Noir, the VR case files. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, this one was actually already out on Oculus, quite some time ago or was it um vive i i feel like this already existed um I'm yeah not i don't sure. know I, because i thought that it was on psvr so but maybe it wasn't yeah i'm pretty sure it was exclusive to one of those other platforms so i think this is just a release uh or a re-release rather uh bringing it to the psvr so that would make um, sense it looks very solid i i remember hearing some solid reviews on it uh, saying that it was a pretty uh, pretty fun experience. I mean, you've got first-person gunplay. There's some car chase sequences. Uh, it's essentially L.A. Noir VR. I mean, it's uh, what you expect out of that style of game. So, uh, John, I think I heard you typing. Did you, did you happen to find anything on that? Yeah, it, uh, it was released <clears throat> on Steam. Uh, so that would be uh, Vive. Uh, yep. December 15th, 2017. So it's been there for almost two years. Wow, so that's that's a pretty long exclusive time then. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Um, yeah, so that's definitely worth uh, checking out. Like I said, I, I think it got some pretty solid reviews back at the time. Uh, and then one that was kind of out of left field is uh, Civilization VI uh, is coming to PS4 on November 22nd. And Xbox. Um, yeah, and Xbox. Is Civ Six not the one that's out already? That's it's, the one that on... it started out on PC exclusively, and then it came to Nintendo Switch earlier this year. Mm -hmm. But the Nintendo Switch version does not have multiplayer. But I think the PS4 and Xbox One versions will. And so it's not on Xbox at all yet. It's no. going to be launching on November twenty second yes. with the PS4. With the PS4, yeah, yeah, that is that's crazy. crazy. Uh, I literally, you could have told me that it was on Xbox, and I would have believed you because I already thought it was. Mm -hmm. I I thought it was too <laughs> when this got announced, but um, interesting. Yeah, it's coming. yeah. So that's dropping. They also announced that uh, the DLC will be available same day uh, for that, um, as well as the Switch version uh, on top of the uh, Xbox and PS4 copies. So uh, if you're a Civ fan, definitely some good news there. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, October's PlayStation Plus lineup, uh, including MLB The Show 19 and Last of Us Remastered, uh, which really is just brilliant, uh, because Last of Us 2, of course, is is coming up here pretty soon, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but you guys are also big MLB fans, too, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, I heard that game's pretty good this past year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they get better and better every year, in my opinion, so... Um, I mean, it's I not like... like we're right around... They don't have any competition, and they really yeah. don't need to change That's up fair. too much. So really, every year it's just uh, okay. This had an issue. All right, let's fix yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's minor improvements every year. Like especially like with how few of competition, that, how little, like virtually no competition at all. 
I think one year like a big change was like dugouts. Like they mm-hmm. made a huge <laughs> update to the textures and dugouts, and that was a huge point that they made in some vidoc that came out. Um, but yeah, hey, respect. <laughs> They're, they're putting work in. That's the important part. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I would imagine with that uh, dropping as part of uh, PS Plus, uh, you guys can let me know what you think, but I, I would imagine that they're probably not far off on announcing the next one. Uh, they I think they usually announce it in, like, February-ish, January. Yeah. It drops in, like, March, April, it, it, doesn't it? It comes out late March. I think this one came out early April, but... Okay. But um, yeah, I think that they normally announce it January, February, because everybody knows yeah. they're coming. Yeah, just, you know it's it coming. Just, it's not a big thing. Yeah. Well, it's a big thing, but it's not a surprise. Yeah, I'd imagine that maybe even December, November, December, they might announce like the cover player. Yeah. You know, after the playoffs are over, but who knows? Either way, it's still a big game to drop on uh, PlayStation. Oh yeah, Plus, especially so. for it being from this year. Yeah, like, that game's yeah. like what eight months old. Not yeah, even. they they right. could have easily released put last year's on there, and I think people would have been like, okay, we can see that. Still pretty happy with it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one that I kind of missed, uh, Joel. Uh, if if you caught some on this, I would I would appreciate to hear your thoughts. Uh, there is a game coming from Enhance Games uh, called Humanity coming in twenty twenty. Yeah, I have no idea. I was watching it <laughs> as it was happening, and I have no idea what this is. Now that's the one with like it's all the there's bodies, tons running. and tons of people yeah. running around and kind of running into each other and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I caught a little bit of it, but I didn't seem to uh, to catch what the point it, was, and it doesn't sound like much was. Yeah, made. It, it, <laughs> it almost seems from what it looks like, it almost seems like it's a uh, some sort of puzzle game um, where you have to get people to certain areas okay. by maneuvering things. But I have no idea. Uh, that's just what it looked like in the trailer. Huh. Yeah, there was there was a quite a few indie uh, games shown here. But the, but uh, that world first. Sorry, not to interrupt you, but that Go what is it? it? Humanity is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah, that it's made by the same people who made Res Infinite. So I'm not okay. sure if it's going to be some sort of rhythm based thing either. I'm, I don't know. But there's some pedigree there then. Yeah, yeah. It's you know a okay. big studio kind of in terms of their repertoire. I may have to go back and check that trailer out. Uh, one that probably surprises nearly nobody uh, is Sony did announce a limited edition Death Stranding PS4 Pro. Uh, they've been doing PS4 Pro special editions for just about every major uh, game release on the PS4 for the past couple of years now. Uh, and so I think people were just waiting for this one. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on uh, on the looks of that PS4 Pro? Um, I, well, I, first, let's kind of describe it. It's a white PS4 Pro with the black uh, handprints on it, and then the controller is like the fetus juice color. Like <laughs> well, yellow. I, I'm fetus. I'm, I'm actually I'm pretty sure that that's the color of Norman Fetus's piss uh, from the game. So, so, so we're going we're going with piss, not the fetus juice. I'm gonna go with piss. Um, okay. But who knows? Maybe nor in the game Norman Reedus is pissing out that fetus juice. So, I mean, he could be. Yeah, it could just be building up in him for so long. Yeah. That's that monster energy, you know, uh, vibrant <laughs> yellow piss. Yeah. Uh, but no, I I think it looks good. It, it's cool. I'm not yeah, gonna buy I, it. I, I, but I, it's yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm not gonna buy it either. But I do like that the um, it's a PS4 Pro, and if you if you picture a PS4 4 Pro in your mind, it's got you know a stack of three things essentially in the middle hamburger yeah a hamburger essentially in the middle one's black on this which i think would be cool if it was just white black white and then no handprints at all um just because i don't know i'm not gonna buy you know uh, either way i wouldn't buy it but i think that that's a cool concept for future ps4s the three Mm -hmm. different colors yeah uh i was kind of surprised they didn't announce the last of us ps4 pro with all the other stuff that they announced with it because like they announced all the collector's editions and everything yeah i i I think it's inevitable though that we'll get one oh yeah they i i I I just think they don't want to announce two on the same day because probably right that that way people don't you know like oh i'll just wait for the last of us one because that one looks cooler traditionally it looks like sony has been shooting for like a two-month leeway for any other special editions uh, so if they do something like that, I would imagine maybe a December or January uh, uh, announcement for like a Last of Us Part Two uh, edition. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know personally. I don't think that the PlayStation 
uh, limited edition consoles have looked great overall. I love the Spider-Man one. What? What do you mean with the Call of Duty World War II uh, camo <laughs> the, print the camo made one? in Microsoft Paint? That was like the ugliest fucking thing I've oh, ever seen. That thing's awful. So if, if you guys happen to come across one of those again, little fun fact for you, but all the camo pieces are PS4 controllers. Cool. I still don't care. It looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> it really does, though. It's it's not that great. I got to say, with this Death Stranding one, I love the controller. I think the controller is the coolest part of this. Yeah. But I really feel like that PS4 is kind of lackluster. What if it's warm, like, all the time when you hold it? <laughs> it's, it's got Norman heaters Norman Fetus's it. piss. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> just like, warm. Yeah, um, you drain the battery in two hours <laughs> because it's got heaters in the side of it. That's uh And it very feels disturbing. a little wet. <laughs> just a, yeah. Thanks for that thought uh, that'll never get out of my head. Really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, moving on. That's the Death Stranding PS4 Pro bundle. Um, Let's get to the big stuff now. All is right. Hopping day of. We got one last thing, and then we'll talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, and that's just a demo for the upcoming remake of Medieval, uh, which is a PS1 game. I did for that one's that. worth noting because if you play that demo, you get a special item in the full game. Uh, they didn't talk about what it was, but uh, uh, are you guys excited that for that? So I've never played the original Medieval. I'm very glad that they. Uh, uh, they're putting out a demo, so I can give it a try. Yeah, I don't think I'll even try the demo. It doesn't look like something I'd be into at all. It's definitely not aged very well. That's what I'll say. Uh, got to see some gameplay on this one recently, and uh, it's it's a very old game. <laughs> we'll say that. Uh, yeah. Maybe worth checking out if you're into the history of kind of the PlayStation and action adventure games as this kind of was uh, was a big staple in that genre at the time but uh yeah it's it's certainly a ps1 game remake uh that being said let's move to the big stuff here oh i, th- I thought medieval was two. the big stuff it, it, it was the big okay this is the anecdote after the big stuff <laughs> nah, right. yeah we'll just throw this uh, in here <laughs> so last of us part two they decided to finally talk about it we've got outbreak day here in the very very near future i think that's tomorrow for us so when the uh, podcast is aired, it'll be the day before, so I'm sure we'll catch some more news here soon. Uh, but we got a release date. We got a fantastic trailer uh, that I'm very, very excited for. Uh, they also announced some collector's edition, special editions, the Ellie edition, uh, lots and lots of stuff. But first, let's talk about that trailer. Uh, did you guys both get to see it? Oh, yeah. Dude, this trailer, hands down, best trailer of this year so far right if i I mean it was great i agree um but i do also enjoy the gears 5 nine inch nails trailer but that's just more of a music thing i think it's pretty awesome but yeah this is a amazing trailer um if you played last of us one and enjoyed it and your nipples did not get hard while watching the last (laughs) of us two trailer yesterday then you are not breathing you're you're dead you are a Mm -hmm. corpse Confirmed I gotta dead. say, if if anybody is listening to this podcast and you haven't checked out the trailer yet, go ahead and pause this. Go check out that trailer. We'll be here when you come back. Go look at it. Watch it. It's real good. But at the end of the trailer, Joel pops out, and man, I teared up a little. Yeah, bit. I pop I, out. I'm not gonna uh, right lie, at you. You think I'm gonna let you do this alone? Oh. Man, that was because this this whole time they've been playing it so close to the chest that they haven't talked about Joel at all. Uh, in fact, some people thought it was implied that maybe he was dead in the game already mm-hmm. uh, and that he wouldn't be a part of it at all, but uh, it was great to see him back in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm honestly kind of surprised that they showed it in the trailer, but I mean, I trust Naughty Dog and what they're doing, so... Um, they, because I think they, it was they, a great r- reveal. Yeah, I, I, they easily could have like just had you know Ellie be like, like, what are you doing here? And then just end the trailer. Um, just, yeah, just to keep could've. people wanting more, but it was an amazing trailer because they revealed Joel. That what that's what has everybody talking about it. Well, also you we finally kind of have an idea of what's going on with Ellie. Uh so last year's E3, we saw her kissing a girl and you could tell that she's actually very close to this girl. And in this trailer, you kind of see that they're out on like a trip together or something they're, like doing a run whatever it is they do. And uh, they get separated, and I think it's kind of being implied that she dies, and these guys like capture Ellie and like kind of torture her or something. Uh, looks like some shit goes down, and uh, Ellie is just completely pissed off, and they're ju- she's just gonna try and take out this entire group on her own. Like, 
some shit goes down. Shit goes down. Part two. Mm-hmm. That's pretty accurate. Uh, there was shit that went down in the first game. You don't say. Yep. But yeah, if you haven't played it, go play super it. Super excited. Anybody, um, it's so good. Uh, me and John are probably taking off work that day, so um, yeah. I'll probably be streaming it. Yeah. Nah, probably not. That's I'm my plan as well. I think this game is a long time coming. The first one had such a large cultural impact, not only in uh, the video game industry, but also media as a whole is Naughty Dog is a master class in their story craft. So very excited to see what comes out of this. Uh, the release date for this is February 21st, 2020. I know there were uh, a lot of rumors before talking about a March release, but it looks like we're getting a little bit earlier. Uh, this is a pretty good uh, time for uh, a launch as well, as I feel like uh, we've got quite a few bangers at the beginning of next year. Yeah, um, with that, I think we should move on to uh, talk about the Inside Xbox that happened just a few hours after the state of play. Um, so this is going to be pretty quick. Um, boring! So yeah, it was pretty boring. Yeah, there was a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, it, it was like over an hour long too, which was very surprising. And it was just mm-hmm. a lot of trailers and interviews with devs about their games. Um, but anyway... Uh, the one big thing we got out of it was that you can sign up for the xCloud beta. I think it's considered a beta. Um, it, but it's going to be a Android-only feature, uh, a beta to start. You can sign up now to try and get invited for a mid-October release of that beta. Um, they announced more games with or games coming to Game Pass, which we talked about. Um, yeah, they talked a lot about Atlas, um, that... Arc game, uh, but pirates. Yeah, uh, yeah. Arc but pirates. Um, <laughs> arc but pirates. <laughs> uh, and then here, here it says other trailers and footage shown during the live stream included Children of Morta, which is out now on PC, October fifteenth on Xbox One and PlayStation Four. Code Vein coming September twenty seventh. The Outer Worlds October twenty fifth, which that game looks awesome. They showed a lot of that. Um, I'm excited to try that, especially because it's an Xbox Game Pass game which is pretty Mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, After Party coming October 29th, another Game Pass game. uh, I'm very excited for that game. Yeah, that game's going to be dope. Uh, That's by uh, the guys that made Oxenfree, which I talked about, I think, last year, and I loved it. Okay. Uh, Tropico 6 coming September 27th. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. uh, There's a beta this weekend, and the game comes out October 4th, which is just next week. Uh, Hitman 2's Haven Island expansion, which is out already. Um, yeah, that was another boring trailer for me just cause I've never played the game. Um, and new DLC for Ace Combat 7, uh, which is out already as well. And a new map for DayZ called Livonia, which is coming soon. I don't know who is still playing that game. Don't buy it. It's trash. Trash. So it's yeah, good. that's pretty much everything from the inside xbox the main thing like i said to take away is the project x cloud signups you can apply today by going to xbox.com slash game streaming i believe it is um uh i don't remember i i signed up for it yesterday uh they they said they're going to be sending out uh invitations in mid-october uh if you do get in you'll be able to play halo 5 gears 5 sea of thieves and killer instinct on your phone so I'm I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, I'm ec- I'm excited to see what people's thoughts are on it because I've kind of held off on Stadia, like doing that whole pre-order thing. Cause I, I've considered it because uh, I you know I want to try one of these streaming things, but really what it's going to come down to is which one's better. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. All right, so. Uh... Something that came out yesterday after the state of play with uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Oh, which we should also mention that uh, Chris Hemsworth is in Modern Warfare. So that's kind of cool if you're a Thor fan. But uh, so the Spec Ops survival mode that was really a mainstay in the original Modern Warfare games is going to be a PS4 exclusive until October 2020. Uh, And... People are not happy about this. So uh, this is from Colin Stevens of IGN. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Spec Ops Survival Mode will be exclusive to PlayStation 4 players for a year, and fans are not happy. Uh, During Sony's latest State of Play livestream, Activision took the opportunity to reveal a brand new story trailer 
giving us our first real look at its ripped from the headlines campaign. Following this trailer, a screen popped up with the text spec Special Ops Survival Mode Play First on PS4 with much smaller text at the bottom that read Timed Exclusive Content until October 1st, 2020. As Modern Warfare hits PS4, Xbox One, and PC on October 25th, this means this mode will be locked out on competing platforms for just under a year, by which time the next Call of Duty will likely be out or nearing release. Naturally, fans notice this fine print immediately, and word spread fast. Not only are Xbox and PC players upset about the exclusive mode, but PS4 players generally aren't particularly pleased with the exclusive either, especially with Modern Warfare being crossplay enabled, even if other Spec Ops modes don't appear to be timed exclusive. Even with previous Call of Duty games often having timed exclusive content on PS4, this appears to be one step too far for fans. And then they put up a bunch of uh, fan reactions, and it's a lot and a lot of people saying this is a bad deal. Like, even PS4 players are like, hey, yeah, no, this sucks. Don't do this. Like, this is bad. And I can I can only really imagine. Like, I played Spec Ops a bit in the original Modern Warfare games, but I, I, I just like trying to imagine, like, I'm a big fan of the zombie mode. Like, what if that was exclusive from me for like almost a whole year like i would completely stay away from the game like that that sucks yeah that really takes away from the experience for people on the other two systems um but yeah i don't know i'm i'm not the biggest call of duty fan uh in general i do play them every few years I, i'll buy it when it comes out but this definitely like has me steering away from the new one for sure as an xbox player it just sucks because, like, it seems like for every good thing that's announced with it, something bad comes out of it with this game. Like, they announced crossplay between all things, and now this. Uh, they announced Chris Hemsworth, but now there's, like, all this talk about the violence and how it's, like, it's trying too hard to be violent and everything. I don't know. I'm going to get it, and I'm going to play it. I'll probably like it because I generally like Call of Duty, and I've did, always liked the Modern Warfare, but... I did either of you guys play the beta that was last week? Uh, yeah, last week. I played a ton of the beta uh, and absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I played just one match because that's all I had time for over the weekend, but um, I thought that it felt a lot more like Battlefield than it did Call of Duty uh, in terms of movement and stuff like that. A little bit, yeah. The game is on a completely new engine for the first time in over a decade, so that changes a lot of the feel uh, of the game right there. But um, as far as the gameplay goes, I, I think it's pretty solid. It does take some time to get used to, though. Yeah, it, it looks beautiful. I will say that. I was pretty amazed as soon as I loaded into a game. And the crossplay works amazing. It's so good. Yeah, that, that crossplay is great. I will say with this uh, survival mode stuff, there is a bit of kind of mystery around the verbiage here. So obviously there is the spec ops mode. Uh, there hasn't been quite a clarification yet to my understanding on whether or not this is the whole spec ops mode or just the survival portion of it, uh, as well as how big of a part of the game uh, this actually will be. So still waiting on some of that. But I will say that I, I just found a, uh, a response from one of the developers uh, that talks about this decision and says that, uh, quote, there are decisions that are above all of our pay grades that have to be considered, uh, end quote. So it sounds like this really was probably an Activision move uh, on surprising. behalf of Sony or part of that uh, partnership. So yeah. uh, pretty shitty stuff, to be honest with you. Yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Let's move on. Let's let's talk some Batman. All right. Oh, Did is he guys... back? Is he finally back? Oh, yeah, he's, he's... in Fortnite. He's now Batman. <laughs> um, not yet. <laughs> did you Did you guys see the uh, WB Montreal tease? I wasn't aware there was one. What, Are you so, serious? Was it like a Twitter thing? or? Yeah, I, I didn't catch this. All right, so on Twitter, uh, WB Montreal just put up a short little video uh, showing a bunch of different uh, symbols. Uh, give me a second to pull it up here so I can read off what they actually it, said. It, and it's the it. first thing that they've, you know, put out on their Twitter in like four plus years. So that had everybody, they, this was on Monday, or I think it started coming out Sunday, were teases about it. And then on Monday they tweeted this, you know, short video of like three or four symbols. 
and I don't know much about the games because I never played them, but I know that people were going crazy thinking that they were going to be in the state of play on Tuesday. Um, yeah. But they were not, which was a huge letdown for people who are crazy about those games. Yeah, no, it was a huge letdown. Okay, so yeah, they just put up a uh, a short little thing showing all these symbols, and it says Capture the Night, K-N-I-G-H-T, so obviously a uh, reference to Batman. And yeah, like you said, this was a day before State of Play, so everyone's like, hey, we're finally going to get something on the next Arkham game. Still no, but we at least, this all but confirms that WB Montreal is working on the Batman game. Uh, so it's probably going to be even longer before we get that rock steady game. But regardless, I'm very hyped for it. Yeah. I think that I want to play through um, the other ones. Uh, I started Arkham Asylum. I probably got like halfway through the game on the 360, but I never uh, beat it. So I definitely want to go back to those. Maybe, I don't know. There's so many games coming out and <laughs> Like, it seems like there's never a dull moment in gaming. Like, maybe one month out of the year now. But, yeah, eventually I'll get to it and play through those. Man, I just wish... Uh, uh, let's just... Let's take a guess here. When do we think we actually see this uh, Batman stuff? Jeff Keighley's Game Awards. That's uh, what I was going to say. Yeah, that's what everybody seems to think. I honestly <laughs> have no like idea. It's... It's, just, it's just weird to me that they would start teasing it now. Right. For something that's when, not going to happen until the game awards? I think January, December. December, December, yeah, January, December. December. Last year it was like December tenth because it was the day before Smash came out. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know when we see yeah, this, December but 12th. it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be hyped when it does get announced. They've been teasing like Court of Owls stuff or something like that. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I think it's like a comic book line of Batman. So mm-hmm. it's a very popular uh, comic line uh, or story. Uh, lots and lots of people are excited for that. I haven't really looked into the Court of Owls story, though, but I'm just ready for more Batman. Yeah, I think I'm going to play through those games, uh, especially with all this hype that people have been giving for the teases. It makes me want to play it even more now. Um, But yeah, with that, I think that wraps up the news. Let's get into the topic of the show. Um, So if you want to tweet at us at Pixel Street Pod... We usually put out a tweet the day day of or day before that we're recording a podcast. So you can follow us there to see when we put out the tweet saying we're going to record and what topic should be. Or you can email us by uh, emailing us over at pixelstreetpodcast at gmail.com. You can send us topics. We'll literally talk about anything. One week we talked about the fucking like Arby's commercial campaign or something. I don't remember. But either way... <laughs> um, at a underscore Zordani on Twitter asks us, uh, the tweet just says, everyone's top five best game cover art ever, and if Super Mario Bros. 3 isn't on your list, you're all wrong. Um, so yeah, this is my girlfriend Elise who asked this. Um, what are some of your favorites? I, we don't have to say five, but... Yeah, let's let's just do a couple. But, yeah. Uh, first, that... is the Super Mario Bros. 3 cover that amazing? It's just him flying yeah. in his... Tanuki. See, okay, I've well, said it. The, you, I've said it multiple times on the podcast that my girlfriend strictly plays Mario games. Like it's very rare that she diverts from playing a Mario game or The Sims if she ever plays games. So, and that just happens to be her favorite game. So okay. to her, it probably means a lot more than it would to me or you. Hey, well, you know what? Shout out to Elise because that is the best two D Mario game out there. So, I don't know. I, I I'm a Super Mario World guy myself. All right, well, what do you got for your covers? So I decided just to Google best uh, game cover art, and one of the ones that sticks out to me is Resistance. Um, And I don't know why. I never played the game, but that cover always freaked me out just because it shows, uh, you know, kind of a dead alien with a, you know, Army World War II-style looking helmet on with, like, four. It's just a weird skull. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. That always freaked me out, but I never played it. I think Last of Us is a good one. Uh, yeah, the original one. Yeah. The the remastered one isn't anything no, no. special. It's just, like, black, yeah, right? Yeah, I think the original one is fantastic. I gotta throw a shout-out to uh, uh, Left 4 Dead. I think those covers are just oh, yeah. instantly oh, yeah. recognizable and oh, so baby. good. Yeah, I, I really still hold out hope for a third one. 
Um, man, I I didn't really think about this at all. Uh, probably a, a good shout out. Uh, one that really comes to mind is uh, Doom, the original one. Uh, it was like just him standing on top of a thing with all these demons like clawing at him and grabbing him. And it was really awesome in the 2016 Doom uh, when you beat the game in the credits, they like actually do a throwback of it where it's him in game and all the demons like coming at him, and then he like just obliterates them all. Uh, really cool stuff there. I will say that it's not necessarily a video game cover, but I, I remember Kojima tweeted out some. Uh, it was a Death Stranding kind of movie poster style, which I, that would have been awesome if that was the cover of the game, but it's not. I think I saw that. That one was fantastic. Um. Yeah. Anything else? Halo Four. Halo Four is a really good cover. Ooh. No. no I, I take that back. Halo Two. Halo Two had the best cover of all time. Oh yeah. I mean, Halo Fours was cool too. <sighs> right. But Halo Two. Oh yeah. The the double SMG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty great. You know. Uh, I know. One of my favorites, and actually one of my favorite games of all time, Bioshock, the original one. With the big daddy and the big little daddy. sister. That's a good one. That's what about Borderlands? Borderlands have always been good. With, uh, uh, with the little... They've uh, always been doing the gun thing. Yeah. yeah. I remember the first one stood out so much to me every time I saw it. I was like, yeah, yeah. that is an awesome cover. But then they just kept doing the, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I would say it's unique. I wouldn't say it's like... I don't know. Because it, it's just literally a bandit on front of a red background. Yeah, but he's shooting himself in the brains, and you can yeah. see the brains exploding, and then in the brains you can see people and stuff, like mayhem. Yeah, I don't know. It It's unique. I, I just don't, I wouldn't put that up there with one of my favorites of all time. What about the OG Doom game? I said that. Oh, you did? I must mm-hmm. have been zoning. <laughs> my bad. He's too busy Googling uh, covers. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, probably... Uh, <laughs> a representation of like one of the worst uh, uh what am i trying to say here like it it's a cover that really does not uh cap capsulate what actually happens in the game but the first dead island with all the zombies and the hurricane and you got the one on the ground and it looks all grim and everything and then you play the game and it's like always bright out because you're in a <laughs> vacation area <laughs> Yeah, you're I don't on think a it ever even island. rains in that game, does it? There's like no, no weather system. Nope. They they just talk about a hurricane coming in, but in the cover it's like the zombies just getting poured on and there's a big storm oh. happening. Such a cool cover, and I like the game, but yeah, it just does not do a good job. I think another good I one got... is Limbo. Uh, Limbo is good. With the giant spider. I gotta look that one up. I've got two more that I think are are pretty good. One pretty old and one pretty recent. The pretty old one is Katamari Damacy. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out because I think that cover is fantastic. Uh, and then the the new one is I feel like uh, Control has really good box art. Yeah, yeah, I like Controls as well. Uh, it's it's simple. It doesn't try to overdo it. Oh, it's very eye catching though. If we're talking about recent games, though, the new Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening, like it. Oh yes, it's such good work. Just like really, uh, showing off the new game's looks and everything. Uh, looks brilliant. Oh yeah, Matt. Wow, I did not realize how awesome that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. What about worst? Let's let's just like name oh, like one or two ones? worst ones. Uh, oh man. Man, I. I don't know. I, you already oh have me God. thinking about the best ones. <laughs> right. Super Mario 64 is like one of my favorites of all time. That one's awesome. Um, I've looked man, up worst bad. video game covers, and there are some bad. It's like all shit I've never heard of. Ultimate Duck wow. Hunting. I did too, and the original Mega Man is something else. Oh, yes, yes, the Mega Man one. I know about that one. <laughs> I, I do know about that one. That one is That's bad. That's incredible. Yeah, it is awful. Um, oh, uh, oh, one that never ceases to amaze me is the Batman Arkham City Game of the Year edition cover. Oh, with all the uh, like quotes on it and everything. Yes, uh, that one. Uh, the press too. release Dude, pieces. All of these Mega Man covers from back in the day are gonna give me fucking nightmares. Oh yeah. Honestly, all of the Mega Man covers are They're bad. Like so Mega Man bad. Eleven, I remember having a bad cover too. Like one, uh, two, and three, and four, 
and five their whole bit how about how about uh the original star fox where it's like a taxidermied fox just standing there Wait, is it really? <laughs> it, yeah, it looks like a puppy. So, oh my god. Have you seen uh, those um like there was like a memes going around about that taxidermied fox? Uh-uh. You haven't seen those? No. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Yeah, it's not great. Oh, I think I think I've got it. I think I I have found the worst one unless you guys have a better uh one. It's Wait. definitely 110% Dracula for the NES. Dracula. Go ahead and check I that cover out. I want to say I've seen it before, but we'll see when I pull it up. Uh, Is it just Dracula in front of the castle? Or wait, no, it's, that's Super Nintendo. You said NES, right? Yeah, the NES one. Okay. Dracula NES. Oh, is it just a castle? Yeah, and it's it's the grainiest picture that yeah. I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> oh. It's absolutely miserable. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, go ahead and uh, talk for a second. I got one more fun one to share with you guys. Yeah, I, I can't think of any more bad ones. Uh, I'm pretty easy to uh, satisfy with this kind of stuff. But yeah, there's some bad ones in here. Yeah, there's one for some game called carnage it's spelled k-a-r-n-a-a-j Ooh, it looks like it was a to, game boy advance game trying to get at Mortal and Kombat's it is, ground. it looks so it looks so fucking like it was made in microsoft word not even paint <laughs> it's so bad word <laughs> uh man uh sn- oh, <laughs> there's okay. a snow white ps2 one <laughs> how about uh, what's this? Fester's Quest. This one looks pretty bad. It, it, I want to post this one in the Discord for you guys. You're, you're really gonna like this. All right, all let's right. see. Hit let's, us with it. You have you have to see it <laughs> to to really believe that it even exists in the first place. And I, I held a copy of this game in my hand. Okay. I opened it up and I didn't know Joel put the taxidermy thing in there. I was like, what <laughs> yeah. the hell? What if, kind if, of cover if, is that? <laughs> if you click on the taxidermy fails, it's the number one. That's the fox that I was telling All you right. about. Calvin oh my Tucker's, god. Oh, I have seen that. Yeah. Calvin Tucker's Calvin Redneck Tucker's Farm Redneck. Animals Redneck. Racing Tournament. Now, here's the best part of this entire cover, okay? What's what's that sub name? Farm Animals Fart. Racing Tournament. Fart. Fart. Mm. And, and like it's they just, eat, they make they blew it out just so you know what they were trying to do. Oh, yeah, this, so this is one of those games that like if you told me that this game is rare and costs like three hundred dollars on eBay, I would believe it. <laughs> if Calvin, you just gave if you just gave me the uh, name, I could have guessed that it was a Wii game. Oh yeah, there was so much shovelware on that system. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm looking this game up on eBay right now. And that'll be a great way to send off the podcast for the week. Oh, um, I'm guessing two dollars. Oh my God, you're spot on. Two dollars with four dollars shipping. All oh. right, um, let us know on our Twitter account at Pixel Street Pod what some of your favorite um, video game covers are, and let us know some of your worst because there, I have a feeling there's a lot, really, a lot of, a lot more really bad cover art than there is good ones. Um, this has been episode 77, I think we established, of the Pixel Street Podcast. <laughs> My name is Joel Campos. You can find me on Twitter at Campos63 or at Mixer uh, by going to Mixer.com slash Campos63. John, where can we find you? On Twitter, I am at Revic Shadows. You can also look me up on YouTube by searching Revic Shadows or go to YouTube.com slash JohnJW92. I am doing a ton and ton of different writing projects uh like i said at the beginning i'm writing for game per now uh i'm also writing scripts for a, another uh gaming site called gameology uh just lots of stuff coming out for me so be sure to check up and connor what about you yeah i'm on twitter at the real birch that's birch with no i so b-r-c-h uh and then i'm also on mixer under birch b-r-c-h again uh come follow me come hang out john and i try to stream from time to time and i know we've been talking about maybe doing some spooky ones here uh with uh halloween coming up so 
yeah, should I'd, be a good time. I definitely think we should stream some. Um, uh, what is that game? Dead by Daylight. I think we should stream some of oh, that. Oh, I am down. I for love the, Dead by Daylight. For the spooky times, you know? Let's do it. Let's All right, this happen. has been episode 77. We will see you right here next week. Bye.